All right, we should probably talk about the cinematic. Let's That's probably the first go. thing to do because uh, let's go. Man, this has been some <laughs> some funny shit. Oh, this has been so uh, funny. The cinematic business. Yeah, so here we are. We've got the Sylvanas Raid cinematic. We've got this incredible, incredible, uh, Sylvanas has dropped all her anima. I guess that's Yep, the, she has indeed. Yeah, no, that's by, uh, g slash mrklw40 on Reddit. Did a fantastic job with it. The attention to detail is honestly sublime. She's got anima. She's got the, like, the Maw Sanctum upgrade sitting there, all her arrows, which is... I don't know if that's a, rel uh, a reference to her dialogue. That kind of disparages the nine, but you know, let's uh, hmm. let's talk about that eventually. I think. Oh yeah, that hmm. that yes, because Sylvanas is. Yep. <sighs> Sylvanas is a character that basically only works from when her story is told through her own perspective, such as in a novel, and she basically has been a fucking disaster within World of Warcraft. Yep. Um, but hey, the WoW team love her, so I guess that's just the way they're going to do things. Even though yep. uh, this is obviously highly controversial. Yep, we're stuck um, with it. Oh yeah, mm. Dakor's put his little note in here before getting into it. Let's agree that online harassment in any way, shape, or form is right. Yes, I mean, obviously. Mm. Obviously, I, I feel like, you know, it's... Ah, oh, it's weird. That stuff's such incredibly fucking obvious. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, it, I don't think there's any amount of saying that this is bad is actually going to be, you know, helpful because um, the people who do it know that it's bad. That's almost certainly precisely why they do it. Yeah, that's the so point. That it's just more about like blocking people and if there's a genuine death threat, right, you know. Please yeah. report. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that is the recourse for that sort of thing. Yep. Internet is not a nice place, although as much as much as it would be lovely to imagine it to be, you know, there are there are people and they're not very nice. And they're, yeah, and they're extremely online, so yeah, humans uh, humans can suck. Yep. Um, but as much as you know that that stuff sucks, and the hmm. you know the, the shit that a bunch of Blizz people caught was you know obviously absurd. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, we start to talk about the the matter at hand, right? Mm hmm. You know, doesn't uh, doesn't exactly change that. So the cinematic, you know, it's it's quite funny, right? Because people are going to say, and you know. To, to degree it is true as she's portrayed in game that she just flip flops all over the place and that you can obviously see so many of the you can see it all coming right obviously because it's they foreshadow it and they build up to it but uh you know the actual moments where they choose to have sylvana snap it all it always comes off as being you know a bit convenient a bit a bit contrived feeling and stuff like that and it's kind of funny because it won't in the novel World of Warcraft Sylvanas that comes out in February 2022. Because that book is going to show us all of this through Sylvanas's point of view. Meaning that we might actually see her, uh, you know, her thought process as she goes through everything that is happening. And that can absolutely bring us to a place where this cinematic, as portrayed, will make absolute sense yeah. for every character involved. Yeah, I imagine that, like, that, just that moment where, you know, the Arthas goes serve, and then she changes her mind, as it seems to us to be a complete flip-flop in terms of character, but I imagine they've already sketched out the two or three pages of the book that will be every single thought she has from the beginning, probably yeah. an entire, like, maybe even a full chapter of, like, flashback I mean, that she thinks about during that. like, done. Uh, Consider right, it was originally right. planned for November, I would hope it's done. Yeah, yeah, so, it, look, it's the sort of thing, and I think it's, it's basically this, um, I think Blizzard does their in-game storytelling for, like... <laughs> they basically do it for YouTubers. That's how it feels. Uh, you know, it feels like they just... Every time one of these comes out, like, they're just handing me a video that's easy to do on a platter, right? Like, oh, that cinematic's out, right? Let's uh, break down all the things. Because they, you know, they, they show us some character moments and then just lots of teases and setting up future stuff. So they're kind of like, you know, they're showing us... <sighs> or not showing us, they're... What's the best way to put it? Because it's like the cinematics aren't really... Oh, wow. I'm really actually struggling to find, find the words here. So I don't think that they're often not great as cinematics. Uh, I mean, like, as, you know, a little self-contained thing. They're kind of, like, just there to give you a big highlight in a specific moment. And then that's almost always to do with, you know, building up a bit of hype, a bit of intrigue, a bit of mystery. But, uh, you know, I think it's that tricky thing where the reason why people like the Sarfang stuff, especially the, just, you know, the one right before Undercity... Um, is because that actually worked as a little self-contained story. Um, whereas I think the Raid End cinematics, you know, it's either like big hype, cool event, but with this, 
this doesn't really feel like big hype cool event i i suppose yeah um, i think a part of that's because people mm. don't give a people don't give a shit about so well yeah, well, that's one of the things. It's funny you mentioned the Starfang stuff because those, like, full, like, complete full CGI things they do that are almost, like, completely, like, their own product, in a sense, mm. they come across as, like, fully, devel full, fully developed, fully designed, and standalone because they are, like, basically super, super expensive marketing pieces for Blizzard. They're also stuff that we really enjoy to see because they are their own stories. Yeah. But in-game stuff always is supposed to be like, you imagine the rest of the game has taken place in this style, so it gives you, like, the framework in your head for how all these characters are actually yeah. interacting, instead of standing around, st like, you know, doing idle animations at each other, because that's not how it is, but... I guess it's the sort of thing where, you know, our characters are, I guess, characters in this story, but it doesn't feel like our characters really know Sylvanas, or, you know, have really grappled with her in a meaningful way. It's like we kind of just see these shocking things that she does, and, you know, within the context of a book, that is from Sylvanas' point of view, like the upcoming one will be, and, you know, the segments of things like A Good War that have been in her perspective. You know, she makes sense, and it's all quite good reading there. But the problem with this is, you know, we see her at the moment in which her actions, her motivations, her thought processes push the plot forward. Hmm. But, you know, plot is only one part of storytelling. So I think we have these, you know, plot moments but we don't really have, we don't have the character stuff to back it up. And I think that's why for so many people, you know, they just see this with Sylvanas and they just kind of go, Ugh. you know, this, they, yeah, they've shown us a little plot highlight bit. And yeah, you know, we've got Sylvanas, you know, having her side eyes at Anduin in you know, the past cinematics and stuff. Um, but Yeah, I mean, it's, it's as someone said in chat earlier on, it's these cinematics are us getting the cliff notes for the plot. As opposed to, you know, the whole story or the whole thing, how it unfolds. Yeah, they're, look, they're, they're trying to do a novel story or like a TV show story in an MMO, but in a world where they haven't really put the work into telling a story like FF14 does. Just, you know, just have to say it, right? Um, so it's, it's that weird thing. I mean, we spent so much time doing random tasks that, you know, like, look, all of my stuff in Ardenweald where I was dealing with the Gorm, <laughs> like, that's mm. all boring shit. Now, if I just think about the amount of, of screen time that, you know, mostly irrelevant stuff that's very side, like that stuff's had so much screen time. And usually I'd actually am very supportive of that within an MMO because it's about fleshing out the world. But if the mission is to tell a big story like this, then we quite simply just needed more time. You know, it, this should not have been like, you know, because this is the plot line that its 9.0 progression took place in the Torghast cinematics that people, of course, just watch in Wowhead, right? So it's just that thing where, you know, player investment in the story, I think, is at an all-time low because they're they're changing the setting from what people kind of knew. Uh, and, you know, you think of World of Warcraft, you think of certain things, but World of Warcraft right now is not those things that most people would have thought of. So player investment in the story is at a bit of a low. And then their in-game storytelling, I mean, it's not great. Right? Yeah, it's not so, handled in any meaningful way, like... It's yeah, kind of <laughs> so they've, they've, they're at this situation where they're really trying to have their cake and eat it, right? And I think this, that's just what the cinematic is, because in the, in the eyes or minds or whatever of the people who crafted this, you know, this is a big moment for Sylvanas' character. Like, she is now fully reformed, right? It's, she's got her soul back. She's, you know, she's back. And she's going to have to, you know, come to terms with all the things that she did and, you know, all of that stuff. And, oh, dear, Zoval has, has got his thing. He's going to be able to get to the um, the sepulcher of the, the first ones and access all of their technology that they used to create the universe. And, oh, he's going to be able to do, like, Thanos and the Infinity Stone stuff with that. Um, because, I mean, this is obviously extremely Marvel feeling, a lot of what they're doing here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but then the problem, the problem with that is, like, yeah, but from a player's perspective, we don't know who Zoval is. We don't really know his motivations that well. We don't, we, they just haven't done like the basics of telling a story with characters with Zoval. I mean, maybe you could say they're trying to have him being that looming threat. He's never felt like a looming threat in game. Not really. Um, and then as for Sylvanas, it's like, again, from their perspective, all of her actions do make complete sense. And like, like I, I know what, what Sylvanas is thinking. I know how she thinks. I've done all the research into her. So I get this cinematic, but most people 
aren't going, they're going to get it logically, but they might not feel it, right, in their soul because of the way that it's been told in such a fragmentary uh, nature in game. And I mean, it's really just continuing a bunch of the sort of questionable competence of the Battle for Azeroth era of storytelling, where it was just, hey, you want mysteries and just, ah, just random shit. <laughs> Where it's like, yeah, they had all their character moments and stuff within BFA, but they just rocketed through the story, like, so quickly. And they they kept on just using the mis the mystery bit. And it was like, as somebody who makes lore videos on YouTube, absolute godsend. I mean, it was just free content. But um, I think in a world where there is such a need for explainer videos, for cinematics, and the types of lore videos that we've done, um, like, it almost, at, at this stage, right... It, it used to be that speculation was, like, fun. I mean, it is fun, but, like, it used to be, like, a fun side thing. But now the speculative videos are almost required to actually get the story as it's unfolding. Um, so it's, it's a very bizarre way that they've that they've taken this. Um, and, yeah, I mean, it's, it's awesome. Like, our, our past big cosmic stuff. I mean, Outland was obviously really well set up. You know, the RTS games, right? That's Warcraft 2. And, you know, then, so, so Outland and TBC, that all makes sense. And, you know, through all that period of time, you know, we'd had Bran and uh, the Explorers League, all the Titan artifacts we were digging up. And that meant that whenever, you know, you have, you've got Ulderman, whenever you get to Ulduar, that's all actually been set up. And, you know, players have actually explored those places. You know, got a little bit of understanding, you know, fought a Keeper or Watcher, whatever it is, um, you know, in Ulderman. Um, you know, so that sort of takes you up to that Wrath of the Lich King period. And then Cataclysm is just very, you know, very Warcraft, right? Cata, Cata is very Warcraft with some odd, you know, elements. Uh, and then you move from Cata to Mop. And Mop is very much that just, like, contained Azerothian story. And then you go to Wad, and yeah, there's time travel -y stuff, but it's, you know, the Burning Legion. We know them. Bunch of angry orcs. We know that. And those stories were, like, quite simple and linear, really. Whereas now it's like... The actual storytelling bit is almost playing second fiddle to the mysteries and the teases. Uh, and yeah, I think that's just why people did not have the emotional reaction that I think uh, Blizzard expected them to have to all of this. I mean, if you click on that video to open it up in YouTube, it's not a good look. It's not a good look at all for Blizz. If you open it and you... Yeah, yeah, just to get the... Um, I agree, YouTube, I agree. I mean, yeah, 4.2k down, yep. 11k, or sorry, 4.2k up, 11k down. I mean... Cue Curb Your Enthusiasm music look. Yeah. You know, this this is not this is not working. And it's that sort of thing, like... I'm gonna, I'm gonna make, put it pretty simply. It doesn't matter if this story makes logical sense. I mean, that's some of the fucking basics of telling a story. It doesn't matter if the character motivations have been put into place. That's all the basics of telling a story. What matters is how it's received by the people you're making it for. And it's just like, sorry, this is not working. This direction of the plotline is not working. That's how it is. Um, and ultimately, this is an MMO. I, I don't think that this is massively... Uh, I mean, it, it feels like a bunch of people are telling their story in our world. And it's obviously their world, but, you know, because it's an MMO, like, a part of that genre is the deep player investment in the world. So it should feel like a, a more of a shared thing, um, whereas it just kind of seems like it's racing on in its own weird little direction. Yeah, um, well, and it's one that I think a lot of players are... You know, it's alienating them from the Azeroth that they knew. It's alienating them from characters that they like. Plus, I, I mean, I have some criticisms as well where I think, like, the way that they are, um, the way that they're trying to redeem Sylvanas is abominably awful. Awful storytelling. 